Destiny Television. This is the crossfire and when you tell you it's fire, it is blazing hot. I think Mahashimiwa, who is our guest tonight, will have to take off his coat in just 10 minutes because it's going to be fire in the studio. Our guest for tonight is Honorable Victor Karethi, who doubles up as Athwana MCA and Majority Leader in the Meru County Assembly. And of course, we have our very own resident analyst, Mr. Kenneth Kimathi. They will be looking at the majority question. But first of all, Gentlemen, welcome on board. Thank it's you. It's good to have you. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you for coming on time. Yeah, I'm humbled. I'm very happy to be here. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Glad to have you. Yeah. Mr. Kimathi, yes. welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, first of all, um, Mr. Uh, Honorable uh, Victor Karethi, you know you make politics look so easy. You're soft-spoken. You don't riot a lot. You make it look so easy. I don't hear you fighting in words a lot. You make it look so easy. First, where did it all start? Were you a politician ever since time memorial? No, I, actually, um, I, I wouldn't consider myself as having been uh, too political. Uh -huh. or, you know, in my early life, mm -hmm. I studied at Moy University, did tourism and all life management, and worked in an, in an elephant's uh, orphanage, mm -hmm. uh, David Sheldry Wildlife Trust. You know, got an opportunity to go out to the U.S., did a little work there, made new friends, came back. Again, I got another opportunity, courtesy of British Airways, who went to the U.K., did a little work. Now, came back, and uh, I worked for many years for Born Free Foundation, which is a wildlife charity. But while there, I was still doing community work, a lot of community work. And, you know, I got very interested in, you know, the politics around and felt that at some point I would want to actually sit in a table where resources mm -hmm. are shared. Mm -hmm. And that was my interest. I mean, that, that's why I got really interested in running for a political seat. Mm -hmm. But to be fair, my dad was a councillor. Uh -huh. So in I think... In county? Yes. Uh -huh. Well, in uh, Nyambene, in the uh -huh. different Nyambene County uh -huh. Council, he was actually the vice chairman. Mm -hmm. Uh, not too long ago, and I'm told some of uh, my 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 ancestors may have had something to do with leadership. Yes. So um, I've been very keen to not just be a politician, really, but to actually lead and make a difference. Mm -hmm. So I, I try to remain as calm as possible. Politics is very emotive. Mm -hmm. People have divergent views, but uh, somehow we are able to navigate. And so far, not too bad. Not too bad. Not too <laughs> bad, yes. Tell you, not too yes. bad. Uh, Mr. Karethi, you know, we've seen you on the forefront, and um, especially now that you're a majority leader, did it just come like that? Um, well, you know, after, after I got a resounding victory um, in August last year, well, actually not last year anymore, uh, in 2017, mm -hmm you know, during the general elections, um, we got to parliament mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, the lead of majority is a position that uh, is only a preserve of the party that has the majority mm -hmm. members mm -hmm. of the parliament mm -hmm. or the assembly in yes. our case. I mean, uh, the, uh, th that is the practice all over. So when we go to, uh, to, to our parliament here in Meru, mm -hmm several people had some interest in the position. Mm -hmm. And luckily, uh, you know, I had a good rapport with uh, several members of the county assembly and the governor and the other leaders of Jubilee. Mm -hmm. And I'd taken a close look at the manifesto at uh, Governor Kiraito's uh, vision mm -hmm. for this county. And I liked it. Mm -hmm. So uh, it wasn't too difficult for me and it has not been too difficult for me because I had understood the governor mm -hmm. before I took over the position of uh, the leader of majority. And, and, and I think at some point I would want to share with our viewers I'm that sure. um, the position of the leader of majority is not the position of the government's spokesperson. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes people mistake me for being the spokesperson of the governor, yes. which I'm not. Mm -hmm. 
Um, this position, first of all, is held by somebody who's been elected by, you know, the voters out there. Mm -hmm. And again, as I've said, uh, you know, forming part of uh, the uh, members of uh, the party that has the biggest numbers. Mm -hmm. Now, having said that, this person, this lead of majority, has to really believe in the virtues, the agendas, the vision of the current, the, the government that he, he or she is serving. <coughs> and uh, there are many responsibilities because, you know, the lead of majority is the bridge between the executive arm of the government and the assembly. Mm -hmm. So one has to be able to manage both, to be able to represent both. Mm -hmm. At the assembly level, the lead of the majority party represents government. So you are the lead of government's business mm -hmm. in the assembly. Mm -hmm. Of course, you work with the other colleagues because uh, in an assembly setup as it is, we have uh, committee chairmen who are the equivalent of CECs. Mm -hmm. And actually there is a talk now mm -hmm. of having future CECs even coming from uh, the assemblies. You know, an MC is uh, elected. Mm -hmm and then uh, becomes a, a CEC. So anyway, for now, these chairpersons work closely with myself mm -hmm. to be able to represent the agenda of the government. Mm -hmm. So that is the position that uh, I now hold. And uh, it's of course not always a very popular position to have mm -hmm. because of course, people who have reservations of the governor yes. will almost naturally have reservations towards me. Mm -hmm. You know, I've had a few people saying, oh, Victor, when Rafkiangu, Lakini, you know, something mm -hmm. like because that. Eh? Governor, yes. Yeah, but uh, of course, I always tell people <coughs> I have absolutely no apologies because mm -hmm. I took over this position, mm -hmm. knowing Governor very well. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the rate that we are progressing, even the worst critics, in my opinion, mm -hmm will really change tune in, you know, in the months and years ahead. Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 um, it's, it's a really, mm -hmm. it's a very involving position, but I have, as I've said, mm -hmm. no regrets whatsoever. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, Victor, let me just ask you, uh, you know, some might ask that uh, if it was, if it were not Governor Kiraita who was in office now, would you uh, still go for that position? Uh, well, it will depend on who is there. Mm -hmm. I mean, during the campaigns, I, I worked hard in my own little ways uh, to have the governor mm -hmm. in his position mm -hmm. because I believed in the vision that he had shared. Mm -hmm. So it takes somebody uh, really, uh, you know, somebody needs to believe in the leader who is, who is uh, sitting as the governor to really be an effective uh, leader of majority. Otherwise, it, it can have so many contradictions. Mm -hmm. But having said that, I believe there are people who get to adapt. You may become a leader of majority, perhaps you're not too sure about the president or the governor, but then over time, mm -hmm. perhaps you get uh, convinced and work properly with the, with the said uh, leader. Mm -hmm. But for me, it was really easy f for us to work closely with the governor because I had an history with him before joining politics. I had uh, the privilege of him influencing my former employer, the Born Free Foundation, mm -hmm. or rather participating in, in influencing my former employer to have projects in Meru. Because mm -hmm. before I joined politics, my last workstation was at Meru National Park, mm -hmm. where the governor had something to do with, you know, the the foundation setting an office there. Mm -hmm. The you know the community of Kanjo Primary School and, and others who are around Meru National Park mm -hmm. will attest to what Bonfield Foundation has been able to do mm -hmm. over the years that uh, we got settled there. So for me, it wasn't too complicated because I knew him. Of course, I I knew him as the member of parliament of Saudi Menti. I know the track record down. Mm -hmm. I mean at Saudi Menti. I knew him as a minister, mm -hmm. uh, in serving in various dockets, mm -hmm. and uh, I was sure that uh, I wasn't getting a raw deal becoming the leader of majority in his government. Mm -hmm. Yes, you, you've mm -hmm. mentioned the Bonfree uh, Foundation. 
what exactly do they do and what did you do that is significant that you can attach to? Um, Born Free Foundation is actually uh, linked with conservation work, uh, particularly the lions. You know, there, there is a, a film that was done uh, many years ago mm -hmm. of uh, known as Born Free. Born Free. Yeah, and uh, this was acted by Virginia, who is still alive, she's a little uh, elderly now, who later on uh, founded the Born Free Foundation with a son, who is now the president of Born Free. So this, uh, this foundation was founded after the lives of Joy, Joy uh, and George Adamson. George Adamson is buried now at uh, Kora National Park, which, which is right next to Meru National Park. And as I've said, uh, those who acted the roles of, uh, of, of George Adamson and Joy Adamson were Virginia McKenna and uh, Bill uh, Travers. Bill is uh, deceased mm -hmm. and both Joy and uh, George are deceased. Mm -hmm. But the son to, uh, to, Trevor, to Bill Travers is still is, is alive and he runs now born free. And actually, interestingly, he's in the country and we're hoping that you'll have a, a courtesy call to the county mm -hmm. government mm -hmm. leadership, the governor and yes. so on. Yes. So, yeah, so it's, um, it's a foundation that focuses not just in the conservation of lions, but on uh, many other endangered species, but very importantly on the communities. That is why I have alluded to the fact that at Kanjo, we have many classrooms that, that have been built courtesy of Born Free Foundation and many other community projects, including uh, the restoration of Ngaya Forest and many other community projects along the periphery, along the boundaries of uh, Meru National Park. And of course, in many other parts, you know, in South Africa, in Asia, in America, and so on. But also, uh, in Amboseli, in Kenya, in, in the Savos, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So that's what Born Free is about mm -hmm. in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Mashimo, you seem to have very key interest in tourism. And as you mentioned, aforementioned, Ali, that uh, you, uh, you did, uh, you studied uh, Tourism. Yes, at more University. At Moe yes. University. Yeah. Uh, recently, I think a day or two ago, uh, Dr. Rugatem was here. Mm -hmm. He's a country representative for, I think, uh, wildlife or something. Yeah. What are you planning? What, what are your big plans with Meru County, with the forest around? Yeah, we, we've had uh, very serious challenges, mm -hmm. uh, especially uh, lately, with you know some politicians saying planting trees is not a big deal, mm -hmm. it shouldn't be a priority. But for me, who comes from a, an, a wildlife environment, tourism background, sort of, I, I believe if many people would want to agree with me, matters environment and tourism would be given more uh, prominence, even on budgeting and so on. Because the, the forest cover that is needed in any area for us to really survive well, to live well, is a minimum of you know 10 percent which we haven't accomplished as yet you know people forget that without proper water catchment areas without conserving the water towers you know mount kenya nyambene ngaya forest for instance which which uh, has the water flowing to Mer national park we are doomed because uh, then the, our livelihoods get affected uh, the rivers dry get dry even the boreholes that we are sinking if we are not very careful, if we don't do afforestation, if we don't plant trees, then there will be problems because uh, the water table will continue going down. We can't retain the water. So I believe it is important. And I, I have continuously urged my colleagues in the assembly, you know, led by the chairman of the committee that deals with that, Romano Moito of Kangeta, to really think about this very seriously, of course, lasting with the executive arm of the government, to make sure that um, this, you know, the environmental issues are not taken like uh, by the ways, because that is a common problem, not just in Meru, but even countrywide. If you look at the amount of monies allocated to world, the wildlife sector, the environment sector, even at the national level, are very negligible. I think in the last budget, 
when we had a, uh, we were working with a, a budget of of uh, over 10 billion the environment docket may have gotten less than a hundred million shillings mm -hmm. overall which includes uh, everything you know cleaning planting trees and uh, it's not good but one percent well yeah it's mm -hmm. uh, it's it's uh, it's something that is uh, worrying as mm -hmm. I've, uh, I've mentioned but that is we you know we are hoping to have uh, changes around uh, because failure to adhering to these you know very minimal requirements the consequences that people will pay in 5 10 50 years 100 years will be drastic we'll have deserts we'll have people with no water we'll have people with no food and so on and so forth so we're doing our bit of course it's not a very popular thing to talk about people like you know very quick quick things, you know, things that uh, they can lay their hands on, you know, fix the roads, build the hospital quickly, build classrooms, things that they can, you know, associate with. Especially for us who are in, in, uh, in politics, you, you are sometimes forced to shelve some of these issues and play to the gallery, you know, try to really do things that uh, most people identify with. But gradually we are trying to educate our people to sensitize them so that they understand that some of these other things that don't appear to make a lot of sense now will actually make sense as we progress. Mm -hmm. And that also reminds me of you know, the, the, the fact that so many people don't even believe in planning. You know, I remember the last one year, uh, during the first one year of our being in government, the governor spent quite a bit of time having committees, making a lot of plans mm -hmm. so that then it would be easier for the progress to actually, you know, get in place. But so many people are complaining, they're saying, you know, let's see action, action without planning. Let me tell you this. Meru, for instance, have had a very serious problem of planning. And that's why we've, uh, we, we, we passed uh, a law, you know, that, that uh, establishes uh, a municipality. Mm -hmm. Uh, we are focusing so much on uh, empowering uh, the, the special planning mm -hmm. uh, because the greatest problem we have in, in Meru, in Kenya, in Africa is, as I've said, lack of planning. If you go to Hong Kong, for instance, you hear people talking of cities that were planned over a thousand years ago, over a thousand years. All people do is just perfect some mm -hmm. of these plans. Mm -hmm but go down to our villages and tell people you want to have a road that is 30, 30 feet wide. People will say, no, we don't have cars. We, we, we won't. In your work to work on Magari. Forgetting that, you know, in a few years time, sure yeah, they'll buy cars, yes. they'll buy, you know, lorries and many other, uh, and many other uh, machines. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's a problem that as leaders, we need to, once in a while, divorce ourselves from politics and actually be real, talk to people candidly. These are the consequences of not doing this or that. And, and, and we are making some headway. Uh, for instance, in my ward, I regularly engage with them and tell them that, you know, life is not just about politics. We can balance, we can play a little politics and do a lot, a lot more development than politics. Yeah, so, so that, that needs to be uh, going around all over, not just in, in Athorna, which I represent, but in you know, all the 45 wards and, and beyond. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you very much. Mr. Kimathi, uh, still keen on tourism because that is a honorable career, it is a forte of niche. Yes. Human wildlife conflict. Mm -hmm. You've seen Meru is rich with uh, uh, resources, especially mm -hmm. wildlife, mm -hmm. and has a population quite substantial. Mm -hmm. And you've seen cases where uh, either elephants have killed people, people have killed elephants. Mm -hmm. What would you tell uh, Victor Karate here? Before we see that we born free and the governor tomorrow to have such discussions, what would you tell them? Okay, um, on where I come from, that is around here, municipality, yes. I think uh, uh, people will have conflict is like uh, a thing that has been solved already because of the fence, the electric fence. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe it has costed uh, bees quite, mm -hmm. quite, 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 quite an amount. 
But then I don't know about uh, your plays, Mashimua, the Mulika plays and all that. I don't know if they have fenced that place or how is it managed? How is con conflict managed between wildlife and people there? Okay, for first, I always uh, like uh, telling people that wildlife was there, uh, you know, has been there before us. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think even when you read the creation story, it's mm -hmm. likely that. Uh, Animals. I don't know. Were people there before animals or no, animals were there? Animals. <laughs> yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's what I wanted you to confirm. Mm -hmm. Human beings came after animals. animals. All animals were created yes. and then human beings, oh, pop, you're mm -hmm. there. Now, we don't realize that. We, of course, naturally, we, we, we of course, want to, to dominate. Mm -hmm. You know, we are more intelligent. We have... Uh, all manner of mm -hmm. sophisticated uh, things all around us. And, and yeah. yeah, of course, God mm -hmm. gave us authority. Mm -hmm. Now, when we appreciate that we are more intelligent than the animals, mm -hmm. then it follows that we need to manage these animals, mm -hmm. not necessarily to kill them. That's why we have the ability to reason and know that we need to have national parks, mm -hmm. we have to fence them. We have to have a way of minimizing the contact between the, these wild animals mm -hmm. and the people. Mm -hmm. And I must appreciate the fact that uh, one of the organizations that I worked for, mm -hmm. the David Sheldrick Wildlife mm -hmm. Trust, the Mount Kenya Trust, which mm -hmm. is run by Susie Weeks, just uh, you know, around Timawa Nanyuki, mm -hmm. the Rhino Ark, and other players, mm -hmm have been instrumental, and of course Kenya Wildlife Service, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the parastato that uh, deals with uh, wildlife matters in Kenya, mm -hmm. have been instrumental in having an effective fence around the Imenti forest, mm -hmm. and that has significantly reduced the conflict. Mm -hmm. Having said that, a lot more needs to be done. You know, mm -hmm. it's impossible to, to fence everywhere mm -hmm. where animals pass through. Mm -hmm. It isn't easy at mm -hmm. all. And these electric fences cost enormous amounts of money. Mm -hmm. So it's a challenge that, con that requires continuous uh, approaches by all stakeholders. Mm -hmm. For instance, when you provide water, enough water, like uh, you, you, you have water within the forest, mm -hmm. you sink a little, some holes for the animals to get water, mm -hmm. you, you minimize the urge of these animals wanting to venture out mm -hmm. of the forest, uh, you know, to disturb people. Yes. When you minimize, mm -hmm. the, wh when you minimize the, the issue of uh, venturing into the forest mm -hmm. to log, you mm -hmm. know, to destroy the habitat, mm -hmm. to cut down the trees, mm -hmm. then you are effectively minimizing the human wildlife conflict. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is that, you know, people go all the way to the Mount Kenya forest, mm -hmm. some even get to the parks, you know, some either wanting to poach, others wanting to cut down trees, mm -hmm. and in the process, mm -hmm. they create disharmony in those mm -hmm. areas. Mm -hmm. So the animals are disturbed, and then, you know, they get to, to disturb uh, yeah. the, 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 people. the people. Yeah, from there. So it's yeah. a challenge, of course, yes. and you cannot get uh, quick fixes. You mm -hmm. know, you, you have to continue working with it, and uh, hopefully th there can be a balance. Mm -hmm. But it's a shame, really, that uh, people will lose lives it's really sad that people get injured. Mm -hmm. I was watching news the other day, somebody in Tharaka was hurt by a crocodile. Mm -hmm. People get bitten by snakes. But the government has a policy that, uh, of course, helps with compensation, mm -hmm. like when people's uh, uh, goats and cows are mm -hmm. eaten by leopards or yes. mm -hmm. lions. There's that uh, whole act that deals with that. Of mm -hmm. course, it requires a lot of uh, public uh, sensitization mm. so that people can get to know about these things. Yes. yes. Um, we should be, well, after the assembly resumed work from a very long recess, yes. I believe you guys had a good time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you said there will be a lot of heat mm. when you resume. Yes. What did you mean? Um, first of all, I have to correct you. You know, when, when uh, members of uh, the county assembly or the parliament yes. goes for recess, mm -hmm. They don't necessarily go for holidays. Mm -hmm. No, not, not, not necessarily. Well, mm -hmm. of course, one can get a little time, you know, mm -hmm. some time with their family. Mm -hmm. You know, I, we have our families, yes. which is very important. Mm -hmm. 
But anyway, during the recess, we also spend a lot of time with the, the people who elected us, mm -hmm. our bosses, you know, in our wards. Yeah. So a lot ne uh, normally happens during the recess, mm -hmm. interacting with the people back there. Mm -hmm. Now, when we resumed, of course, this is the third mm -hmm. session mm -hmm. of uh, the life of this parliament. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's very clear that the members of the county uh, assembly, especially mm -hmm. those who are voted in for the first time, mm -hmm. have uh, have gained even more experience. They've, mm -hmm. they've been at it now yes. for quite a bit of time, yes. and they know exactly <clears throat> more than ever before mm -hmm. <clears throat> their role of um, legislation, mm -hmm. oversight, and representation. Mm -hmm. So I was alluding to the fact that uh, the members of the County Assembly of Meru mm -hmm. during this session will not spare any effort mm -hmm. in making sure that these three roles that are spelled out properly in our constitution are properly executed. Mm -hmm. And there had been uh, some complaints of laxities in some departments where, you know, some people uh, have been said not to mm -hmm. be effective in the roles that they have been given. Mm -hmm. And we were clearly stating that uh, it will be not business as usual. Yes. We're coming up to hold people responsible mm -hmm. for any, any, any omissions, mm -hmm. uh, you know, either intentionally or unintentionally. Mm -hmm. We really want to go to the bottom of, the, of all that. Because yes. at the end of the day, the voters, the people who, uh, who give us the ability to mm -hmm. get to parliament mm -hmm. will not hold any other person accountable other than ourselves. Mm -hmm. So it is for the MCAs and the, the governor to really ensure that things run smoothly. Mm -hmm. So going forward, like I know in a couple of weeks, the chairman of implementation was uh, hinting to me that uh, we'll be having, we'll be calling some, uh, some, some, some staff members from the executive mm -hmm. arm of the government mm -hmm. to come and explain some anomalies that have been noted. Mm -hmm. So we won't, you know, we won't relent in ensuring that uh, there is proper service delivery to mm -hmm. our people. Mm -hmm. Because again, that is why we were elected, yes. oversight representation and mm -hmm. uh, legislation. Mm -hmm. So that, that was uh, mainly what we were referring to. But also there are many other things that are coming up, like uh, we are reconstituting uh, the committee, uh, some committees within the assembly. You realize that as the leader of the majority, I'm the chairperson of the selection committee that slots members, mm -hmm. members into the various uh, committees mm -hmm. that are actually the engine of the assembly of the parliament. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, that, that, that is also something quite emotive. We'll also see the reintroduction of the finance bill, which was passed in uh, the year 2014. Mm -hmm. It is likely to make it its way back to the uh, to our assembly mm -hmm. and I know it's been you know quite emotive I've seen people in Kobu I've seen people in other places uh, demonstrating mm -hmm. about the rates that they pay and I know that is uh, something that of course we're expecting a lot of uh, people of Meru to have interest mm -hmm. in and many other very interesting uh, bills that uh, mm -hmm. we are uh, we're expecting within this uh, session mm -hmm. so that, that that's all really uh, but even as politics remains emotive and divisive sometimes mm -hmm. here in Meru we agreed among us ourselves yes. that uh, it won't get physical mm -hmm. you know we won't yeah. rain <laughs> blows on on each other mm -hmm. we want to cut and to, to have an image of different MCAs mm -hmm. you know it is said that uh, the position of MCA or the former councillors is the position of people who sometimes throw go physical, you go physical. <laughs> but we are really trying to run away from that. Mm -hmm. And and we've been very fortunate because uh, in the Assembly of Meru we actually have real professionals. Mm -hmm. We even have uh, we have my neighbour who you know represent Akede who has a PhD. Mm -hmm. We have mm -hmm. people with masters. Mm -hmm. We have people who are serious accountants. Mm -hmm. We have teachers. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and, and many others. We have people who've been uh, in the 
practicing uh, religious leadership, mm -hmm. community mobilizers, and so on. So whenever we sit as leaders, we really ensure that uh, the image, the image and uh, the whatever we pass in parliament mm -hmm. reflects a whole different mm -hmm crop of leaders. Mm -hmm. We have young, vibrant leaders who are leaders even at the university level. Mm -hmm. And we have economists mm -hmm. in the assembly. So I'm actually privileged to be the leader of majority in an assembly that has real talent, mm -hmm. that uh, is, is, uh, is very keen to make a whole huge difference in the way things are done mm -hmm. in, in, in the county of Meru. Mm -hmm. uh, on social media, uh, someone asked, Kindly ask uh, Mwishimiwa, what does it mean when you say uh, a bill has been sponsored by maybe Honorable Victor Kariti? What does it really mean? Uh, okay. Do you those when, 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 you, when you say a bill mm -hmm. uh, has been sponsored yes. by, you know, anybody, mm -hmm. it's, it's uh, the presenter, the person who is behind it, the person who has put it together perhaps, because mm -hmm. there are some that are generated from the executive arm of the government. Mm -hmm. Others can come from individual members. Mm -hmm. And actually even the public has a role to play because I've seen uh, people from uh, the communities yes. coming together, mm -hmm. seeking, uh, you know, writing a petition. They bring it to the assembly mm -hmm. and one member is able to present it to the gallery, to the assembly members. Mm -hmm. And then the speaker, of course, gives directives. So whenever anybody has very serious issues, mm -hmm. we always encourage them that, you know, they have a way of sponsoring as well, sponsoring uh, the seeking of a statement, for instance. They can, people can seek, uh, they, they can have a petition done. Yeah, so, so that's all we mean when we say mm -hmm. a certain bill, a certain motion has mm -hmm. been sponsored. But no, it's not money, it's, it's not about money. money. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the sponsor people yes. talk about. Yeah. It has nothing to do with uh, money. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Kimasi, mm -hmm. uh, what do you think? Uh, your, your, your niche is analysis. Mm -hmm. uh, the previous regime mm -hmm. uh, of uh, MCS yes. and this regime of MCS, yes. how, would you, how would you go about them? What do you think about them? The two? How would you compare them? Well, I think uh, the current regime as Mwishimiwa said, it has a couple of sober heads. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> what is that? Are you, are you, are you <laughs> saying? <laughs> not to insinuate, but the other yeah. regime, <laughs> let's not say that. Okay. Let, let, me, let, let me continue. Yes. Uh, at least the way they approach issues, okay? And uh, there are people that have come with a focus, yes. okay? And uh, there are people that seem to be knowing what they came to do for their people at home, back at home. Uh, let me not say about the former one. Let me talk about this one. This one mm -hmm. okay? uh, from a layman's point of view, because I've not been in the assembly, but what I read, what I see, and what I hear them even in the news talking about, I think at least there are people that can sit down and strategize. Mm -hmm. A disagreement notwithstanding, because everybody has his own opinion. Yes. But at least I think there are people that can sit and talk, uh, if you can go against the grain, then I think in this county assembly, mm -hmm. you should be very strong. <laughs> yes. So I think these guys uh, know what they came to do. Yes. But uh, let's judge them on the last, last race. <laughs> <laughs> it's too early. Eh? Yeah, it's, it's too early to judge. Uh, all right. Uh, yes. Uh, Mushimiwa. Yes. Jigani West. Yes. You're tough. Yes. He's hunger stricken. Yes. As it's uh, reported. What measures is the assembly taking to ensure that uh, the situation does not get out of hand? Um, very good question. Uh, as you said, I come from Tigania West. Mm -hmm. Actually, a thorn award which I represent mm -hmm. is the biggest uh, ward, mm -hmm. you know, out of the five that yes. we have in Tigania mm -hmm. West, at least uh, in terms of uh, the land, yes. the landmass. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of it is actually semi-arid. Mm -hmm. And indeed, even some of the other wards within Tigania West are semi-arid. Now, we have a very serious problem with water. It's a huge problem mm -hmm. in Tigania West. 
and uh, without jumping the gun, because you know, you, we've we've uh, before we got on air, we were talking about uh, some demonstration that we had in our backyard. Mm -hmm. The central government, just like the county government, appreciates that uh, Tigania West has a very serious deficit, water, water deficit, mm -hmm. and that is why uh, in two. Uh, 20, uh, 2016, the national government gave a, a 152 million shillings for irrigation, actually within my ward primarily mm -hmm. for a project known as Kingero, mm -hmm. to try and uh, make people less relief uh, dependent, mm -hmm. or actually even no, not relief food uh, reliant at all. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, some people, some crocodiles, well, actually, it's, I think it's even demeaning for a crocodile. I think some thieves mm -hmm. squandered the 152 <laughs> million shillings. Yeah, well alleged, because uh, we are yet to actually understand yes. how 152 million shillings was spent and there isn't water mm -hmm. within uh, the area that was um, meant to benefit. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that aside, as a leader, I have made a very deliberate effort to ensure that uh, out of the resources that are located within my ward, mm -hmm. a lot of it goes towards water provision. Because you see, with a ward that is uh, what, uh, water deficient, mm -hmm. of course, food will always become a, a, a problem oh, because yes. the rains are not uh, sufficient. Yes. We rely on rainfall that uh, we are unfortunately unable to predict anymore mm -hmm. and this reminds me of my earlier point of people not conserving the forest mm -hmm. and the catchment areas mm -hmm. these are some of the consequences you know global warming and so on mm -hmm. and um, so we've we've uh, you know like for the first financial year 2017 2018 we allocated 9 million out of the 20 million kenyan shillings mm -hmm. to go specifically to water related projects in Athwana. No, in Athwana alone. Mm -hmm. That's now Athwana. You know, I'm, I'm a bit cautious about talking about the entire Tigania mm -hmm. West, mm -hmm. lest I'm accused of, uh, you know, overstepping <laughs> my mandate. <laughs> my mandate at the moment is, is especially in, in Athwana. Of, yes. of course, I'm the leader of majority, so I know a little bit about what happens in, in, in the other wards. Mm -hmm. So we are making it our priority to have water, not just in Athwana. Actually, the governor of Meru has helped us have a hundred boreholes already mm -hmm. within the first financial year mm -hmm. and we're sink sinking some other 50, about 50 others within this year. Mm -hmm. So in Athon alone, already four boreholes are functional. Mm -hmm. I've gone there, seen people farming, mm -hmm. you know, some vegetables, you know, skumawiki, tomatoes and enough. so on. Of course not enough. Yes. We need to do a lot, of, a lot more. Mm -hmm. I had a discussion with the governor the other day about him uh, helping us allocate resources mm -hmm. uh, to have huge dams, mm -hmm. you know, to have uh, water harvesting happening. Mm -hmm. I'm also alive to the fact that uh, the current member of parliament yes. has been very keen to have uh, water dams in the lower part of uh, the Tigania West, mm -hmm. you know, where water is harvested and people can use it during the dry season. Mm -hmm. And also, we are focusing a lot on uh, empowering our farmers on uh, good agricultural practices and having crops that mm -hmm. can withstand the very difficult uh, weather conditions of our area. We are tempted to do dengue mm -hmm. in, in our area, which didn't do very well. Mm -hmm. Uh, of course, some people started castigating us too much on, on, on that. But uh, luckily for us, we started in a small way because we're not too sure. Mm -hmm. And we'll continue, of course, uh, trying a little bit of dengue. We're also doing a bit of sorghum, cow peas, mm -hmm. uh, some maize and some beans. Mm -hmm. And also, there are parts of uh, the world that I represent that cotton mm -hmm. does well. So we're trying to do a lot of crop diversification so that um, our people can be self-reliant because they are some of the most hard-working people probably on earth mm -hmm. but unfortunately we found our we find ourselves in an area where we have serious challenges you know in Meru 
there are people who come from uh, these other, you know, towards the mountain mm -hmm. where there is a lot of tea, mm -hmm. a lot of coffee even, bananas in some of these areas, mm -hmm. really fertile and with a mm -hmm. lot of water. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you go towards the Nyambene and after Nyambene, you know, around the Nyambene and, you know, the upper part, mm -hmm. again, a lot of tea, then Mira, a mm -hmm. lot of, you know, the cut that uh, people get millions of money from. Mm -hmm. And then now you come to the area that we represent, the lower Tigania West, the lower, of course, Tigania East, mm -hmm. part of uh, Igembe. And also there is a section of Ement, you know, the Egojis, the, mm -hmm. the Mitungus and so on, that are also quite dry. So we, we, all, we have all these challenges that we are trying to manage through, of course, the giving affirmative action, mm -hmm. like to the Nyambene region, where the governor said, you know, let most of these boreholes be sunk in that region mm -hmm. very deliberately. Not that he hates the people of uh, Imenti, mm -hmm. but you know, it's obvious that uh, this region, Athwana requires more it's water more than Kwene Ward, for instance. Mm -hmm. And you know, that, giving just an example. Mm -hmm. So we are working hard, extremely hard, to try and uplift the lives of the people that we represent mm -hmm. now and in the future. Of course, we encourage. Uh, other players as well. We are not only dependent on the government. Mm -hmm. We've been uh, talking to other players who can be helpful in empowering our people. And uh, talking of which, recently we formed uh, some dairy cooperative in, in the world that I represent. Mm -hmm. And the few farmers who have uh, some cows, you know, some uh, dairy cows, mm -hmm are now about to benefit from, uh, from you know, having their milk collected and, uh, and, and, and sold off, you know, to, to you know, some places. Mm -hmm. So empowering and empowering and empowering. We mm -hmm. want our people economically empowered mm -hmm. so that they're able to completely forget this, the issue of uh, relief food. Mm -hmm. And of course, also giving people uh, other opportunities, you know, employment opportunities, business opportunities. We are working very hard to, to try and empower people, although mm -hmm. capital is a big problem, mm -hmm. especially to the youth and the, the women around. Mm -hmm. uh, but we would want to see them getting more and more government tenders to be able to supply things, because the more they are economically empowered, then the more chances of anybody relying on relief food mm -hmm. is, 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 you know, disappears. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the things that we are doing, but of course a lot more needs to be done. Mm -hmm. How we wish we had as much resources as we actually require. Mm -hmm. We've been having discussions about not just having the 15% which we have, you know, the resources coming from the national government, mm -hmm. but even 40, 50% even, 60 even, because these counties, as long as corruption is, uh, is disallowed, mm -hmm can actually completely transform the lives of people. I've seen it myself. Mm -hmm. I look at my word and say, oh my, how, how I wish we could get more and more resources and yes. of course be accountable for mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. and make sure that uh, people are actually getting value for money. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it, it, it's something that is doable, you know, kicking, uh, eradicating the relief food uh, issue mm -hmm. because it's embarrassing. Nobody actually wants to look like a beggar. You know, mm -hmm. when you're given relief food, it's, it's terrible. Mm -hmm. It's terrible. So, and it's, it's um, you know, even the self-esteem disappears mm -hmm. because you're just there, you know. Kuna mm -hmm. pewa, una mm -hmm. So we, we'll continuously work on that. Of course, the more we get resources, the more we'll be able to knock out this idea of relief food. Mm -hmm. Mr. Kimathi, you've heard about, about 152 million shillings. Do you think, in your own opinion, that there is a disconnect between uh, the national government and the county government in terms of allocation of, uh, of uh, funds? Because we've seen that uh, money allocated for mm -hmm. development in Athwana Ward mm -hmm. uh, vanished. Mm -hmm. Yet Athwana Ward has a representative who, is also, who also doubles up as a majority leader in mm -hmm. Meru County, but the money vanished. Do you think, in your own opinion, that uh, there is a disconnect between the national and county government? I think uh, there is still uh, uh, a war between the national government and the counties mm -hmm. as far as uh, devolving funds are concerned. Because 
counties, even the last time they said uh, they still are uh, undergoing teething problems. Mm -hmm. But I think these teething problems are caused by lack of sufficient funds. Yes. Okay? They are not teething problems uh, in terms of the government or the county governments not being able to implement projects. Mm -hmm. okay? But plans are there, but there is no sufficient money. So I think uh, the national government still withholds too much eh? and they have so little to do. If you devolve, if you devolve counties, then you should devolve finances to follow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. You, can, you cannot devolve a function. <laughs> mm -hmm. You cannot devolve a function yes. and not devolve resources to to implement that function. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, the national government should let it go, and should be left with what 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 is enough for the, the responsibilities that they have been left with. Uh, that said and done. Also, there is the issue of. Uh, the responsible use of money at the counties. Mm -hmm. Okay, most of the counties we've seen blunt at you. I mean, misuse of resources. Okay, but I thank God for uh, this time round, uh, due to the backlash of Wanjikos, the MCAs have not been seen going abroad as frequently as they used to the last year. Okay, because you could have seen, you used to see MCAs going outside there, and they are, they are paying double uh, allowances, sitting allowances. Sitting allowances while they are sitting on the aeroplane mm. going somewhere. Yes. <laughs> so I think you're too mean I, on. I believe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, but I believe uh, the government, the national government, should let it go. Should get should get resources to the counties, and then judge the counties when the counties have sufficient. Funds. But and, but, and but on the same, is, is that a clear indication that maybe corruption levels? at the county governments are actually lower than corruption levels at the national government because 152 million just vanishing like that. No, let, let me first of all put uh -huh. this into perspective. Sure. You know, 152 million that we're talking about, the Kingirwa money, yes. was uh, given to this project in 2016. Mm -hmm. I wasn't the lead of majority then. Uh -huh. Uh, I well, wasn't elected that. even. You're not even elected. I wasn't, no, 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 uh -huh. because I, I got elected in 2017. Mm -hmm. 2017, yeah, towards the end. Yeah. And uh, of course that one doesn't absorb anybody from, from all these issues. Mm -hmm. Whether you are national government or county government, people need to be accountable. Mm -hmm. And in any case, and this is what even our governor is, yes. tells you know, people, the masses out there, mm -hmm. the Wanjiku, the person down at the grassroots, mm -hmm. that woman, that man, that young man, everybody, yes wants services. It doesn't matter whether it's the national government, whether it's the county government, mm. all people want are services. Mm. When you cross through a bridge, it doesn't matter. All you want is a bridge. Yes. You need good roads, you need schools, mm. and so on. Mm -hmm. And luckily, because of perhaps the close working relationship between the county government and the national government, at least in the case of Meru, mm. I've personally experienced it even at the local level, mm. you know, I work very closely with the DCC of Tigania West, very mm. closely. Mm. The ACC, the chiefs, the assistant chiefs. Because, you know, we sit together and reason out and say, you know, these are the same people that we are serving. Mm. So I think the whole idea should be try to minimize that gap between the county government yes. and, the, and, and, and the national uh, government. Mm. And I think it is also envis envisioned mm -hmm. in, the, in the constitution itself. Whereas there are two layers of government, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't disallow members to work closely uh, together. And for, for, for the counties that actually have had an harmonious way of doing things, mm -hmm. then the ripple effect to the masses has been immense. Mm -hmm. We've seen our governor coming you know, jointly with uh, various ministers, the president has come here several times. And I think if we sustain that, then uh, this dream of making Mary even greater will be realized mm -hmm. faster than we, uh, we, we, we may realize. Mm -hmm. Bec I mean, we, <coughs> we may have anticipated. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the emphasis should, of course, as he's saying, should be to have more and more resources mm -hmm brought from Nairobi, mm -hmm. we, we don't know what uh, a whole close to 80% of the money or even more of the resources is doing in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. We need to see more monies devolved because water is a devolved function. Yes. We need to see more resources devolved because health, 
which is very key, is a devolved function. Mm -hmm. We need to see more resources devolved because agriculture, which is the backbone, or at least is supposed to be the backbone mm -hmm. of our society, mm -hmm. is devolved, and so on and so forth. So the little uh, top, uh, you know, the, the top officials at the national level, mm -hmm. who of course need to be there to do a little bit of coordination mm -hmm. because it's one country, mm -hmm needs, in my opinion, <coughs> to be left with perhaps 30%, at most probably 40%. So mm -hmm. it should be the other way around. They need to have less, the counties need to do, mm -hmm. to have more. But of course capacity needs to be built so that we have proper investigative uh, systems mm -hmm. in case somebody squanders money for the public, they are held accountable. Mm -hmm. Because we don't want to again devolve corruption. You mm -hmm. have people all, you know, playing all manner of games with the people's money, you know. So we, we don't want a situation where money, yes, is devolved, but on, not the corruption element. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, and that is what we've been uh, advocating for. Even the push of uh, a, referan a referendum, which people are talking about a lot, mm -hmm. in my opinion, should revolve a lot more about having structures that make people even more accountable, mm -hmm. And importantly, having resources, <coughs> excuse me, having resources mm. coming to where it matters most in the 47 counties. Mm. It shouldn't be so much about uh, positions and so on and mm. so forth. It should be focused on the Mwanainchi, you know, the person at the grassroots level. That, that for me, mm. would be really important. But mm. having said that, of course, I, w I would be also advocating for a situation where we have uh, the, the, the MCAs playing a more active role, even perhaps being CECs, the members of parliament, being ministers, you know, the president having uh, his cabinet from the parliament, so that then there is an easier way of linking with the Wanainchi. Mm -hmm. so I was telling somebody the other day when uh, the CS, who I respect of course, when, when the CS education, Amina Mohammed said, you know, the help student need to <coughs> Uh, to be arrested, who've not paid uh, the loans, mm -hmm. I was like, is this for real? You know, as an elected leader, mm -hmm. when people come to apply for bursaries, mm -hmm. you have an opportunity of actually understanding the complication of uh, people's lives. Mm -hmm. You get to see what people go through to get that education. Mm -hmm. Because people come to, you have huge files of Applicant, mm -hmm. like in my case, I had about a hundred, no, a thousand, one thousand four hundred applicants, and the amount of money is less than three million for their consumption. Some have, have paid zero uh, amount of fees. Mm -hmm. So you look at it and, and you're like, this is a serious problem. So when we have uh, people perhaps who are more in touch with the reality, people mm -hmm. who are actually elected, yes. perhaps. It may make uh, even a uh, uh, greater impact on the lives mm -hmm. of, uh, of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Yes. Quite. In your view as majority leader, what has Meru County government achieved so far in terms of development? Well, um, naturally, mm -hmm. you know, as a leader of majority, yes. uh, somebody opposing us would think that, oh, Victor is, is, is giving the government too much credit. but Honestly, mm -hmm. I, I said earlier on that uh, we spent a bit of time planning and making sure that the systems were flowing. Mm -hmm. We had uh, various committees set up from the grassroots, you know, the ward level, the sub-county. We had various committees for markets, for hospitals, you know, various structures. And then we had staff members who are not fair, the sub-county administrators mm -hmm. and the ward administrators. Mm -hmm all in place. So that took a bit of time, you know, getting things ready, mm -hmm. getting the strategies right, coming up with a, with a document that we're calling Vision 2040 for mm -hmm. this county. Mm -hmm. um, but then when all that was done, then a lot of focus, of course, uh, continued on the promise of the governor of providing water. And I've already mentioned that we have uh, a hundred boreholes already functional. Uh, that, 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 that has already happened. And you know, one other great achievement is the allocation of 20 million per ward mm -hmm. 
each financial year. That's close to one billion. Mm -hmm. That's close to one billion. So it is upon me as the leader of Athwana, as the elected leader of Athwana, to sit with the people of Athwana and agree through public participation mm -hmm. on what needs to happen using this 20, the, the 20 million shillings. Mm -hmm. So every ward has had their pro various projects happening, cuts of the 20 million shillings. Mm -hmm. Like I've you know, said, mm -hmm. 9 million out of my, the 20 million in my ward was spent on water. I had 3 million on on uh, bursaries, mm -hmm. I had some money on uh, on uh, on roads. I actually had some money also for a tree nursery. I have mm -hmm. a, close to 100,000 trees mm -hmm. that are now in a nursery mm -hmm. setup that I hope to continue growing so that uh, we can plant, we can have a bigger forest cover in my world. Mm -hmm. That's another way of mm -hmm. you know, kicking off this idea of uh, relief food yes. gradually. It may not be instant, mm -hmm. but you know, gradually we'll get there. So. The, the, the biggest milestone, in my opinion, is mainly the ability to let the people at the grassroots make uh, decisions of how they would want the monies uh, mm -hmm. spent. And, you know, we've seen very, very big projects coming up. Like I visited my friend in Kiberesha the other day. I saw out of these 20 million, he's built some, some uh, stores. I've gone to Natho, mm -hmm. Natho where uh, one of my colleagues there represents mm -hmm. uh, Motora.